to Build, where once again we are live from London. Please give it up for today's guest, Strike Back star Warren Brown. Thank you very much. <laughs> So if anyone has any questions for Warren, then please tweet them to us on at Build Series LDN or leave a comment on Facebook and we'll get to as many as possible. Welcome to Build. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm very good. So we've got loads to talk about. So obviously people might know you from Luther or Liar. You've got Strike Back and X Company coming up. But we're gonna, so we're going to start with Strike Back. You're coming into the show now. It's season six. Give us a little round off of where you, what's the sort of starting point and tell us a bit about your character. Okay, so Strike Back, if, any, uh, if anybody hasn't seen it, um, is a, an action adventure series following Section 20, who are a um, covert military operations team. Um, and the show ran for four or five seasons. Finished a couple of years ago, and this is essentially um, a reboot where the, mm. the previous team has been uh, disavowed and disbanded, and they're brought back to uh, go after one of the world's uh, most dangerous men who's been broken out of uh, capture. He's, he's been captured and he's been broken out. So we're bringing the team back together, <laughs> but it's the new team, so it's not bringing the old team back together. No big deal then either, just the world's most dangerous man. Yeah, yeah, Easy yeah. peasy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So obviously, you know, you mentioned they they've already done kind of five seasons, and it's sort of it's a reboot. But do you have to have seen if you've never seen it before? Can you jump in at this point, or do you need to have seen all of them? Uh, well, of course, no, you don't need to have seen it. Just start now. <laughs> um, I, I had seen it, and uh, you know, I was I was a big fan. And mm. some people have said, you know, is is there a bit of pressure because the previous team had four years to you know learn the skills to get to a certain mm. standard, and then we've come in. And the audience and the fans of the show are just like, well, they just want us to to, to start where they finish. So mm. there was a little bit of pressure there, but we'll we'll see how we get on. Mm -hmm. Did you? You said you'd seen the previous ones. Have you managed to speak to anyone who was in them who was part of that team? Get any tips? Uh, yes, we did actually. I've, I've I've met both of the the, the two guys, Philip Winchester mm. and Sullivan Stapleton. Um, and one of the things they just said was, enjoy it because. Uh, as they said, and as we had experienced, it was unlike any job I've ever done before. Mm. Um, and they said that, you know, they absolutely loved it. And as soon as they were not involved in it, they just miss it so much now. And they've both gone on to do huge shows in America, but they still dearly miss Strike Back. Mm -hmm. So we've got some lovely pictures here of all of you together. Uh, it's quite clear in this picture as well that you didn't film it here in the UK. Where did you film it? And how long did you kind of spend on it? Uh, we started in Jordan. Um, we went out to Jordan for a month before we started actually shooting, just to train. The training was insane. Mm. Um, so we, we were getting up in the morning, going to the gym, then going to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, then going climbing. I don't know why climbing, because <laughs> I don't think we did any climbing in the show, but <laughs> team building and all that. Um, and then we would spend uh, four or five hours in the evening at the King Abdullah Special Operations Training Center, oh, wow. training with the Jordanian Special Forces. So, uh, yeah, Jordan, then Budapest, uh, then Croatia. Mm. So we got around a little bit. And what was that training like? I mean, it obviously sounds very intense. I mean, yeah, what was that like, trying to do that? Uh, I can't swear, can I? You can swear a little bit. It was fucking mental. <laughs> It was insane. <laughs> it was so full. You know, I'm, I'm relatively fit, and um, you know, before being an actor, I Thai boxed professionally, yeah. so I've, I've kept myself in relative shape. But this was, yeah, was was incredible. I think just before we started shooting, we were at a point where I know I certainly was, and I can vouch for a couple of others. Mm. Um, I was more tired about to start this job than I'd finished a lot of jobs in my career, and we were just starting the job. <laughs> That's not ideal, is not it? Not ideal, no. <laughs> Did you think as well, with the Thai boxing background, were you kind of quietly confident that it would be fine? Did you sort of think, I've, I've got this training in the bag? Nah, I, I knew the Thai boxing would come in uh, useful for sure, because there were you know, so many stunts and fights, so I could definitely mm. draw upon that. But no, I didn't think, oh, this is going to be easy, because just you know, the duration of the shoot and, you know, long shooting days, and then we would be in the gym of an evening. So mm. it, the, the, the stamina in the background I could draw on. Mm -hmm. but I didn't underestimate it. Mm -hmm. So without spoiling it then, I kind of want to speak a little bit about the first scene of episode one, because just it's a lot, isn't it? A lot goes on. You talk about stunts. There's, there's a lot of things happening. Does that kind of set the tone well for what's going to happen across the series? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, sh strike back is strike back. It's 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 it, it goes off straight away. Mm. You know, it doesn't. There's not a slow build. It's we start with action and that sets the pace and that's pretty much how the the show goes and how Ooh. every single day for us <laughs> like went. <this>. Yeah. <laughs> Where are these? Uh, that's actually, just before we left Jordan to come to Budapest, mm. um, we had an, uh, Hungarian armourers with us, but for some reason they couldn't transport the rest of the ammunition that we had f for in Jordan to Budapest, so we had to blow it up. So we, we just we had an afternoon where I think we just fired about 8,000 rounds into the desert, and then all the explosives, we just went, they just put us in front of them and blew it up, like you do. <laughs> This, this all just sounds so surreal. You must have just sat back in the... Do you just get into bed in the evening and just think, what on earth was I doing today? No, just got back into bed of an evening and went to sleep <laughs> straight away because of the stuff you've done. And it's one of those things that it's so hectic and, mm. and you're operating at such a level constantly every single day that you don't actually get a minute to think about it. Mm. And it was, um, it, it was actually at the end of it, I, um, I stumbled across an anecdote recently that I could only draw comparisons to. I started scuba diving a couple of years ago and went swimming. Uh, I was actually asked, we're shooting a movie in the Bahamas and there was support divers with us. And they mm. said to us one day, do you want to come swimming with sharks? And I went, no, sharks are dickheads. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> and then a couple of days later, I found myself swimming with sharks. So now he was the dickhead. Um, <laughs> but it was amazing, and to see them in their in their you know in their natural environment, which I just one eighted my um, opinion of them, and they're just mm. such magnificent creatures. I went back the, a year later to do some more diving. I was now hooked, and we stayed on after the film, did the qualification. Um, don't worry, this this is going somewhere. It's right back later. <laughs> uh, I went back a year later to do some more diving, and this time. They, uh, I was going to do the shark dive again mm. because I know the owners and the people who run the school now, they said, do you want to feed the sharks? Again, I should have said no. I said yes. <laughs> so I went down with a chainmail suit on and a, and, a, and a box of fish and a spear and, and fed these sharks. Oh, my God. Um, and, yeah, one of the most terrifying experiences ever. But I get you have to... I had to act down there because, you know, sharks, a bit like dogs, but more dangerous. If you're <laughs> scared of dogs, they know it, don't they? Yeah. So, so I was told, you know, just play it cool. So I was acting my tits off down there, pretending to be really cool. Did anyone take a camera? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got, okay. I've got pictures. Um, <laughs> but it was only on the way back after I'd played it cool for like 30 minutes and fed mm. these sharks that I realised what the hell I'd just done. And I burst out <laughs> laughing uncontrollably <laughs> for about two minutes, just going, what have you done? What have you done? Um, and it was a little bit like that with Strike Back. See, I told you I'd bring it back. <sighs> Nicely um, done. It was crazy, crazy, crazy for the whole shoot. And it was only afterwards that you went, oh, God, what have we just done every <laughs> single day? Oh, yeah, I nearly got, yeah, that, that was quite dangerous. <laughs> well, we had a question coming on Facebook, actually. Joe Story is asking if you did your own stunts in the show, and if so, how did you find it? Uh, I would say, oh, there Ooh. he is. That looks like me. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty confident that I did a good 95, 96% of my own stunts. That's a lot of stunts. Yeah, I, again, I knew this, this role was going to be very, very physical, and it was one of the things that, you know, really drew me to this project and mm. made me want to be a part of it. And, uh, again, they want us to, you know, it is a show like, like, like not many other shows, and they want you to to do as much as you can so mm. and we had a fantastic stunt team and stunt doubles and we you know we were so often like no 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 I'll do this I'll do this it's all right and then there were a couple that I'd go no nah, you know what you're all right there stunt double. you can you can go and do that I'll, I'll be over by the uh, craft table having a latte <laughs> were there any that you wanted to do that they said no your, your stunt double's taking this one and it was a sh sh it was an easy uh Easy. <laughs> yeah, not easy because I don't want to do the map. There was um, a scene where Daniel McPherson and I were chased um, and we get cornered and we have to jump off a balcony into some water. Mm -hmm. That was deemed too dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was stood <laughs> closer than I am to you away from explosions going off. Oh my God. So, but no, they, I, I, you know, they, they know what they're doing and, and these guys are at the top of their game and that what they say goes and luckily for us um you know with with their training and guidance and advice we were able mm -hmm. to do so much more than i've done on anything before mm -hmm. so we're going to have a look at a clip in a minute but basically i was hoping you could talk a little bit 
around what we see. So we have this, this is going to be so vague, I'm really sorry, but we have this big opening action sequence that kind of kicks it off. And then your character finds himself in a bit of a less than ideal position. Would you say it's like an isolation cell type I don't know thing? what clip you're going to show. What? Is it at the beginning? It is at the beginning, okay. yeah. Uh, so, you know what, should we have a look at it and then you can chat about it? All right, let's have a look. Nice room. Should have asked for one with a view. <clears throat> Colonel Adina Donovan. I've been wanting to meet you for a while. Yeah. I hear of a popular guy. Well, I like the wild ones. Have they set a date for the court martial yet? Monday. It seems a shame to end a promising career over one punch. You deserved it. Off the record, I agree. Intel was bad, security was lax. The team deserved better. I've been tasked with cleaning up the fallout. Not much I can tell you. They knew we were coming and it hit us hard. I'm not here to interview you, Sergeant McAllister. I'm here to recruit. Have you heard of the Section Initiative? Sure. They were the people you send in to do the dirty jobs that could later be denied. I prefer covert military intelligence and counterterrorism. Dangerous soldiers for dangerous missions. I thought the sections had been shuttered after what happened with 20. They had. But it's my feeling that Emir Idrissi isn't going to be stopped by conventional means. I'm assembling a team to take him down. There's a JSOC operator in Libya who was digging into Idrissi. He's gone dark. I need someone to find and rendezvous with him. But more than that, I need a weapon. I like that you're angry. That you want payback. I'm giving you that chance. Are you in? What do you think? Well done. <laughs> so he's very intense, isn't he? Do you think it's fair to say there's a bit of a an attitude problem, maybe? Problem? I mean... <laughs> I couldn't help but notice how stiff my nipples were in the scene. Did anyone else <laughs> spot that? I just like that. Um... You know, so this is just as he's been recruited by the fantastic Nina Sasonia, who plays uh, Colonel Donovan, who becomes our boss. So the opening uh, scene of the series is uh, uh, my character, Thomas McAllister, with his SAS team on the way to pick up aforementioned world's most dangerous man. And the intel that they've been given isn't quite as accurate as they'd hoped. Uh, everything goes awry. He loses his team. And when he gets back, he's not very happy with his commanding officer. Mm -hmm. Hits commanding officer, ends up in military prison. Um, but he's given a lifeline here. So, I mean, he's, he's pissed off at the whole situation and he's lost his team. And this is uh, kind of a knowledge branch and uh, a chance at redemption. Mm -hmm. So I think this question's always really telling. But what do you think his biggest strength is and what do you think his biggest weakness is? His really stiff nipples are, are a weapon. Are they a strength or a weakness? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, he's, he's so driven and determined. It is personal. And, you know, she even says that she likes that he's angry. So that's... Uh, I think that could be a strength and a weakness. Because mm -hmm. she, she wants to use him as a weapon. They want to go after this particular target. But could, uh, you know, because it is so personal, that could become a problem um, in terms of, you know, orders and... Following, following the orders. Mm -hmm. So this is the final question on this, and we're going to chat about X Company for a bit. But you obviously filmed on location. You spend quite a lot of time together. What was it, was it like on set? Everyone always says, oh, it was like a family. It was so great. Did you have that amazing vibe? or Because his subject matters a bit. Yeah, it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was good. It, you know, it's, it's, everyone's thrown into that same situation. Mm -hmm. Everyone's, you know, uh, very far away from home. Um, but you always get on, it's a professional business, it's, it's a people business, you, you come to do your job um, and you know you meet many people on, on many jobs that you really get along with and you know you'll go out and socialise with. Um, there wasn't tons of time because you know we would film all day and then um, for vanity reasons we would be in the gym every night. <laughs> I spent so much time with Daniel McPherson um, and that was great. Uh, so we, we you know, work all day then we'd be in the gym and then a bit of food and then bed and then up and at it again. 
Mm-hmm. We should have rested at the weekend when you have either one day or two days off on such, um, such a regime as this. That should be your rest day. However, working in that week, uh, we didn't really rest. It was like, okay, now you've got one day to destroy yourself mm-hmm. and drive yourself into the floor even more. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's well, have some steam. <laughs> We're going to move on to another show that you've got coming up. So it's uh, X Company. It's a World War II spy drama, which is a bit different. It's on the History Channel. And is it... Am I right in thinking it's kind of based on a true story, this one? Yeah, it's based on... There was a place uh, in Canada funded by the Brits, um, but set up in Canada called Camp X, that was mm. the first ever spy training facility. And Ian Fleming and Roald Dahl are amongst the rumoured um, pupils of, of the school there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was something that I, I knew very little about, and it, it's something that, you know, played a huge part in the Allies when in the Second World War. And it was a story that hasn't really been told, so mm. it was great to be a part of that. Uh, Mm. And it's another one. While they're very different shows, kind of, you've got Strike Back, it's this, like, covert missions team. Then uh, X Company is obviously, you know, war spies. It's very, in a way, similar You were going to say, they're very different. You've got Strike Back, which is this covert mission team, and you've got X Company that's this covert mission <laughs> Wait a minute, they're exactly the oh, same, but, no, but 70 years apart. <laughs> yeah, but they're very, they are very different, but they've got similar themes. What... Are you just drawn to the shows like that in particular? What is it that makes you want to take on those roles? Um, if I'm offered the job, I'm, I'll do it. <laughs> like uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're, there's a similar, you know, there's a, a military-esque theme. Yeah. But, um, as I say, Campex was, was uh, a, about a historical story that I knew very little of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, period piece as well, which I had done very little of, mm. which was great, apart from shooting in, like, 35 degrees heat with tweed period <laughs> clothing on. It was quite hot. Did you have lots of experts on this one? With period dramas, quite often it's, like, some a historic, like historian to tell you, like, no, you need to do this like this, or your pronunciation of things, perhaps. Did you have people doing that? Um, I, I think the, the, the people behind X Company had so thoroughly researched it. It was a project that they'd had for about 16 years. Oh, wow. Um, because they knew of it, because they were Canadians, and they'd actually made a short film with a couple of the characters in that they had, they had made and directed and starred in, actually. Mm. Um, so it was, it was something that they had done so much research on that they knew about. And then, you know, you get onto set um, and people like Andrea Fleisch, our um, costume designer, again, they're so well up to... Uh, their, their knowledge is just incredible on whatever job they're doing and, and certainly, you know, this period of, you know, World War II. So everything was just absolutely in detail and, you know, that right down to the, to the art department, you know, the sets that you would go on. Mm. It was just like stepping back in time. Did they have any kind of weird tricks or anything they used to make it appear on screen that it's, you know, to get the period right, that maybe you were surprised by on set? Um, I wouldn't say tricks. I think, it, again, it's down to, just like, say, the art department and, you know, actually building the world. We shot X Company in Budapest again. I've actually spent more time in Budapest than I have <laughs> in the last few years. Um, but Budapest, just the environment and the, the infrastructure that they have there, mm. uh, and a, a, a lot of the the areas that we filmed in, are kind of have been untouched since then. And then, you know, if you sprinkle on the the, the magic of the art department and the design team to to, to build these environments, it, it, like I say, it, it's not tricks. It's just you know people that are very bloody good at their jobs. Mm-hmm. So I've got a final few questions and then we're going to have some from the audience. And we've got one from Facebook to start this bit off. So Jessica Rose has asked, did you love being in Liar as much as we loved watching it? Oh, hi, Jessica Rose. Um, <laughs> yes, I did. Um, Liar was, uh, again, very different uh, from... Fr- from com- I came straight from X Company onto Liar and then straight from Liar onto Strike Back. So very, very different. It's a lot. Um, but no, the script was fantastic. Um, the opportunity to, to work at home again was drawing um and you know ev- every single person on there um joanne froggett johan griffith zoe tapper uh, you know everybody that was involved mm. w- was was fantastic and it was uh, a yeah a joy to work on mm. well it was huge as well because i remember when it started lots of people were eager to tune in but it felt like every single week just more and more people were talking about it tweeting about it were you getting reactions in the street it feels like the sort of show where you might have had people stopping you to chat about it yeah i think well, i just i think i just got back um, from filming, I remember go, going away a couple of times and, and actually being on a flight and 
coming around, tea, coffee, what happened in Liar? Who's the liar? What's <laughs> happening at the end? So, uh, I mean, it was great to see the response and uh, mm. kind of watched it on social media. And uh, yeah, it definitely got people talking, which was brilliant. Mm. And did you know, you know, when you got your scripts for it, how far did they go? Did you know who the liar was? Did you know what the ending was going to be? Um, I did by the time I was filming it, but it was, uh, I think while I was in Budapest and I got sent the script to potentially tape and, and get involved, um, I read the first one and it was, I was gripped immediately. The script mm. was that good. And you didn't know at that point, which I think was right. a great thing at early doors for the audience as well. They didn't know. So I was like, I rang my agent. I was like, yeah, I want to tape for it, but can you get me another script? I really need to find out what happened. It was, it was that good. So. <laughs> And obviously, we already know that a series two is coming. That was confirmed, I think, on the night of the series one finale. And it's going to be a whodunit. Do you, I mean, presumably you can't tell us, but do you know much about that? Are you going to be in it? Just, what can um, you tell us? I can't say anything. Nothing. Nothing. I feel like sworn to mad secrecy. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be, yeah. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I think it was a project that, uh, I don't know whether they, they had always planned, but obviously with mm. the, um, the, re the, the audience reaction. Um, and we may be doing strike back at the same time, so I, I honestly don't know how much my involvement will be, if any. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's cryptic. And also I'm like, ah, I'm really torn, because I want to see you in both. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, people said as well with Liar, we used to get like, we've got a lot of comments on the website about how people thought your character might have a, very, a darker side. When you were playing him, did you kind of... Did you think about that? Because obviously your character goes beyond like what we see on screen in a way. You think about other like facets that he might have. Did you? How dark did you see him as being? All my characters have a dark side, dear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so ominous. <laughs> um, I, I think it was great. You know what we we saw from Lyle. You know, nothing was as it as it seemed. Mm -hmm. Every character was hiding something. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is very much like life, you know, not always what you see is what you get. There's always things going on underneath, which is, again, one of the things that I really liked about the character and the project. Um, and I think it's great to, to not spoon feed the audience everything, you know, to treat mm -hmm. the audience as adults and to have them ask questions and, and also leave some questions unanswered, I think it is good. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got some time for some questions from the audience. So does anybody have a question? You've got a microphone, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Warren, nice to meet you. Um, quickly, uh, after working on X Company, how does doing a period drama compare to doing something like uh, Strike Back or Liar? Um, thank you guys for coming. Thank you for your question. Hello, guys. <laughs> uh, I, I mentioned very briefly, you know, running around uh, in sweltering heats with period costume on is quite tricky. But then, you know, you go to something like Strike Back in sweltering heats and it's uh, modern clothing, but there's, there seem to be more of it and more weapons and more. So, so that was tricky. Um, Liar, we, we shot in the winter. So that was Baltic freezing down, the, down around the coast. Um, so, you, you know, very it depends on the temperature. Uh, the pace is different. Obviously, you know, Liar was, was more drama character led so that was it was nice to just be chilled sat doing a scene talking to people i think we did we had one day on strike back actually where we spent a full day and it was myself daniel mcpherson and katherine kelly the wonderful katherine kelly and we, we spent a day sat talking to each other and nobody had a weapon nothing got blown up <laughs> nobody died <laughs> There was no screaming. There was no incoming. Move, move, move. And it was so surreal. We kind of left that day going, "What? What the hell? Are we? Have we just walked into a different show?" Um, <laughs> but that's that's a, a great thing I, I, I love and I feel fortunate about in my job is that everything is so varied. You know, if you just do the same thing all the time, it, it could become boring. But just um, just how varied it is is something I really really enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> We've had another question in, uh, kind of on that note from Jocelyn as well on Facebook, about um, how does it feel when you're switching between characters as you move between projects? Does it take a while to kind of readjust? Um, I suppose uh, once you've finished, it's okay. I actually, we were shooting Strike Back, and I had to do some ADR. Um, you know, every every time you finish a project, you do. At the end of it, you, call, you do ADR. I think it's additional dialogue replacement. 
um, basically where you might have to record the sounds or record voices or they'll also add extra lines so often and it might not be something that you said on the day but they just want more information and um, yeah, I was on strike back and it was so far gone from uh, since I'd done Liar and it was come to record the lines and I recorded the lines and then we finished. I said, okay, let's just listen to that back. And then I realized I was just talking in my own accent, the kind of strike back accent that I used. <laughs> and it was a very soft southern accent that I used in Liar. So that, you know, if there's been a bit of a, uh, a time difference, um, that, can, that can be tricky. But mm. you kind of know once you, you, you get out of the costume, that's it. you're not in that character. Although, no, strike back, actually, we finished and you're still walking around places going, right, looking for danger. <laughs> looking for in danger. Sainsbury's. Yeah, going, yeah, yeah, oh, there's always, always danger in big Sainsbury's Crayford. <laughs> Gotta be careful. <laughs> Gotta be careful. <laughs> Have we got another question from the audience? Yeah. Hi. Um, so my question is, where, did you learn anything as a toy boxer when you started out acting that helped you when you started out acting? Um, you know what? I uh, not immediately, but when I when I, I kind of stumbled into acting a little bit by accident, and uh, as as I embarked on on the pursuit of this potential career, um, I was initially a little bit apprehensive because I thought I've only just decided I want to do this, and I went to Salford University. I didn't go to drama school, and I and I was thinking, you know, I've, I'm quite I'm I'm only just deciding now that I want to pursue this, and a lot of people might be a bit younger, but they've known you know, all their lives that this is what they wanted to do. But I very quickly learned that the Thai boxing had given me something that not a lot of people had. You know, I, I had ex uh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of life experience. I traveled the world fighting. Um, and, and, and I realized that there were some things that I could draw on that I didn't initially know. I remember actually the first time I did a bit of theater and waking up in the morning and it was that same feeling as when I used to wake up and I knew I was fighting in the evening. And I turned up to the theater or you turn up to the, to the sports hall and it was that, again that same, all right, it's about to go off and then the audience would come in and the crowd would come in and it was like, this is the same, I, I know this. And then you come off, uh, we, they would then say, all right, we're gonna do a warm up for the theater and I didn't know what a bloody warm up was. So I'm stood there, chatter boxing, getting warm <laughs> to go on stage. Um, and then, and then that set, uh, there's also a rush after you come off stage that was like, this is the same as fighting. So, so, so then I was like, actually, you know what? I, I've come a very different route and there isn't, um, I mean, people, there is a, a conventional route, but I think everyone's route is different and that's great. Um, but yeah, I, I learned that, that I had so much already within me, you know, that dedication when I said, I'm gonna, I want to pursue acting and some people said, no, well, that was similar when I said I wanted to tie box and people said, oh, you can't do that. Just, um, just knowing that if you wanna do something badly enough and you, you're willing to put the time in, so it was like just ded uh, dedication, commitment, drive. So yeah, absolutely, there was, there was a, I, I believe that, uh, how I've got to where I am in my acting um, career is definitely uh, largely down to uh, uh, my Thai boxing. Have we got another question? Hi, uh, um, I was just wondering, what's the thing you miss most about home life whilst um, working on location? Um, well, actually, this year, um, the, la the last couple of years, I've spent so much time away. But uh, right at the beginning of this year, and I'm about to go away to do strike back, my sister had a baby. So, and she, we had the due date, and uh, she was like, when do you go away? I was like, this day. And we're like, oh, I was like, how do you make a baby come early? I want to see the baby before I go away. <laughs> um, and actually, I went away to Jordan, and she hadn't had the baby. Um, luckily, a couple of weeks into the, the, the training, we had to come back to London to do a read through. And I managed to get up to see her just for a day. Um, and then went off for six months and then didn't see her. And then all I saw was 500 WhatsApp pictures a week. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I, you miss birthdays, you miss weddings, I've missed funerals. Uh, you know, th these are the, the sacrifices that, you, you know, that I, I've, with this career I've chosen. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's personal things like that that you do miss and, you know, people are understanding. Actually, some people are not understanding. Hiya, mate, can you come <laughs> to my wedding next year? I don't know, mate, because I don't know if I'm gonna be. Well, if you, pull, if you tell them now, you can get the time. It's like, it doesn't work like that. You don't, <laughs> it's just so difficult to plan anything because you never know. Um, you know, anytime anybody asks me to commit to something, it's like, I'll let you know the day before, is that all right? Because um, you never know. But um, no, thankfully I, I'm back now and trying to take a little bit of time out and I've been up to see the little, well, she's not so little now, she's huge. Um, yeah. 
Thank you very much. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for. So thanks very much for coming. I know. Thank you for having me. Thanks for, for coming out, guys. Uh, Strike Back Season 6. Oh, wait. <laughs> there you go. Strike Back Season 6 starts on Sky One on the 31st of October. And if you want to catch up on Seasons 1 to 5, then that's on Now TV. So make sure you do that. Please give it up one more time for Warren. Thank you.